All right, folks, we are back. I'm Rich Folley. This is PBS Book View Now. This is the Miami Book Fair 2016. Such a lovely day here. Uh, and I'm sitting right now with Juliette Kayem, who's the author of Security Mom, An Unclassified Guide to Protecting Our Homeland and Your Home, which is the key element. Welcome. Yes. Nice to see you. Thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah, no, thank you. I've, I've seen your stuff. I've seen your, your a CNN analyst. Yes. You talk about a lot of these issues. Uh, you come from the government, the Homeland Security yeah. Department. Let's start there. Okay. Let's talk about your background, and then we'll jump into how right. you've sort of applied it to my life at home. Oh, good. I, yeah. I, I hope so. So I actually started off as a lawyer at the Department of Justice in the in the Bill Clinton administration, um, and got involved just through, through a complicated series of events with um, counterterrorism cases. There were. 12 at the time. Uh, this was before 9-11 in 1998, 1999. That then led to... Like a, a quaint number. Yeah, quaint yeah. number. And then led to a position on the National Commission on Terrorism, which being from D.C., you know, commissions are created when no one wants to deal with the problem. And this was a time when, like, you know, bin Laden had... Um, uh, attacked in, in 1998 the U.S. embassies in Africa, 1999 the USS Cole. So we were a commission formed to sort of assess uh, uh, the, the growing threat of this man named Osama bin Laden. I served on that and for personal reasons, as I described in the book, my husband got a teaching job in Cambridge, Massachusetts. We move up there and I am just had my first baby, sort of thinking about a career change in uh, uh, on September 11th, 2001, and decide, oh, I'm going to go to New York and hang out with my sister and my parents. And then obviously, some people's careers are defined by outside forces, and in my case, uh, a very tragic one, and sort of then ended up uh, being well-known, running programs, teaching and counterterrorism, and then entering uh, both state and federal government and homeland security. Yeah, and that, when I first picked up your book, Juliet, I, I didn't know if it was just going to be like, this is what you need to do, yeah. you know, chapter one, this is what you need to do, chapter two, this way. It really actually, you take each chapter and sort of lead it off with one of those sort of global, uh, you know, happenings, right. whatever yeah. it was, and then scare scare us about what actually happened there, right. but then start to find a way to apply yeah. that to your everyday life. Well, that, that's a difficult thing to it, do because it, it, it feels so far away It sometimes. was, and, and you can talk to my editors about how difficult it was for someone like me to, you know, to, to embrace the fact I wrote a memoir. I mean, that was, you know, people would ask me what the book was about and I'd do all these dancing arounds and then my husband would be like, it's a memoir. It's like, okay, because it's hard to talk about myself, especially in national security where people tend to have these... Um, uh, I would say, you know, sort of uh, more linear personalities. But what I knew when I got out of government, the book was me looking back at, at, at 15 years in Homeland Security and Counterterrorism was, um, I had a story to tell um, about what our Homeland Security is, why we need to accept a level of risk, um, what we can do to minimize our own vulnerabilities at home and in the homeland. And I didn't know how to tell that story. I mean, I had you know, I had all the scary stories, but I didn't know how to relate it to people. And it just became clear to me that the way to relate to people as a Homeland Security expert was talk about myself. I have right. three kids. I worry about them. I want to minimize their risk. I, you know, I worry about viruses and earthquakes and oil spills and terror and, and, and relate to them in that way. And I think, um, and, and, and it was, so it was, I can't say it was fun writing, but I think it was the most honest way to get people to recognize, uh, uh, the level of vulnerabilities we have and why they're a good thing, but also how they can engage in their own homeland security. I mean, we called it homeland, right? And that seems so distant. And I say in the book, one of my favorite lines is, and I'm critical of my profession, you know, we, you know, even when I'm on CNN, you know, we talk to the American public in a way that either makes them tune out or freak out. Right. And as a parent like you are, there's got to be a third way and right. so I try to find it through the book well I think it's evident in the title security mom yeah. that was like you clarified early on this is about you know a mother writing this story right. and obviously all of your expertise comes into play I was drawn almost immediately to something that you write in the book that talks about you know some of these things happen and one of the first thing that pops up whether it's the Boston Marathon yeah. bombing whether it's 9-11 is never again. never again and that's something that we all speak about like Boston strong yeah. and never again and you tell us early on that that's just not, that's it's a, a false fallacy. hope. It's a fallacy that, you know, after 9-11, we believed that any vulnerabilities of ours as a, as a nation were a, an inherent sign of weakness. And, and we, you know, sort of embrace this never again, and we'll go to war, and we'll do this and that. And then all of a sudden, you know, and I'm in the middle of this, you start to realize that that's an impossible standard. I mean, it is for government, for but for our nation. I mean, if you think of what makes us vibrant is... 
uh, the flow of what I call the of people, goods, and ideas. And, and, you know, and I'm not even talking about immigration. So think of the Boston Marathon. After that, people would say, well, we, you know, how do you have a safe marathon? I go, well, the only way to have a safe marathon is to have no marathon. Right. So our standard has to be safer. So I really want people to get out of their head this idea that you know, never again is our standard. Mm -hmm. We try to minimize risks and maximize our own protections, but at some stage we want to have the marathon, we want to go to the NFL game, we want to go to a, a festival. I don't want to scare you, but you know, look, right. I mean, there's a level of vulnerability right. about But that's living. life, and that's it's living. Life. And we talked about this off camera a little bit. Like, even as a pa parents yeah. do understand this. You Thank know, you, you. want to, I think there are a lot of parents, and I, I think I was one of them for a while, you want to, control every element, you want right. to protect them, you want to prevent anything from happening. Right. At some point you realize in order to live and for yeah. your child to, to, to experience life, right. that you actually need to sort of let go and unspool and, and take the leash off. Right, and that's right. And so, you know, one of the lessons I teach through having raised three kids, so, so Cecilia was born in 2001, Leo 2003 as we're going to the war in Iraq, and then Jeremiah is the le literally as the levees are breaking during Hurricane Katrina, and my involvement with, with those catastrophes and others, those disasters and others, you know, that, that we have to accept a, a level of risk. And so what I say in the book is don't be scared, right? Get prepared because part of what our obligation is as citizens and as parents is, you know, assume something bad will happen. And we do it every day. We just don't think about it this way. Assume something bad will happen. What do you wish you had done? Um, because you're not going to, you know, you can't just wish away the bad thing from happening. And I don't mean just terror. I mean, you know, the hurricane or the disrupt, you know, any disruption. So in it, I do have some advice. And, and what I tell, you know, people is I've been through a lot of disasters. And um, the most important thing that animates everyone, everyone, uh, is family unification. As a parent, you'll know this. If something bad happens, where are my kids? You don't, I mean, no offense to our spouses, but you don't, you know, they're second, you know, where are my kids? And if you could think a little bit about family unification and, and, and ways in which you have the home, your home prepared and you're protecting your cyber network um, and you're doing basic um, uh, sort of protections or, or copying of papers and just sort of, it takes two hours, it's not a big deal and you sort of get yourself ready and it gives yeah. you something to do. I mean, that's the thing, it's like, if you watch TV long enough or read the newspaper long enough, I mean, you could be you know, terrified into paralysis and that's just no way to live our lives. Right. You also talk about communicating with your yeah. children in this case. Um, you know, I think we all want to protect them from anything fearful, right. um, like something as terrible as a school shooting or, or right. of the lights going off while we're not home. I mean, everything, I mean, we're losing power. Yeah. Um, but but it, your advice is to actually prepare them in right. a commonsensical and calm way. About in a calm way, because, you know, so obviously I always say it's age appropriate. So very, I, my children aren't young anymore. They're off on their own on, you know, buses and Ubers and, and, uh, and, uh, and have phones and stuff. So it's going to change over time. So I always say it's age and maturity appropriate. You know, some kids can handle this stuff. But you've got to assume that once your kid hits a certain age, it's not like they're not going to know, right? I mean, they're getting information in ways that you and I never accessed when we, when we were young. And so better to acknowledge it, let them express it, but also prepare them. So I know a lot of parents get very upset. Oh, we're doing active shooting cases. Well, you know, unless you can dream up a world in which we don't have a proliferation of gun violence, wouldn't you rather you know, have your kids have the basic skills to know what to do in a situation like that. Yeah, you, you um, came from the Homeland Security Department yeah. and now you're independently outside. doing this outside yeah. of it and you're talking on CNN and all, but it doesn't feel like to the outsider looking in that this, that, that sort of down to the ground level right. preparation is a part of the Homeland Security uh, roles and responsibilities right now. They seem really focused on, importantly, yeah. the big issues of terror right. and of protecting the nation. Is there another level that we're not there, seeing? There the is, level and, I, and I think, you know, basically I work for uh, Napolitano, I serve on an advisory board for Secretary Johnson, the two secretaries under the Obama administration. They're very much focused on Homeland Security's hometown security. And so what a lot, people think, oh, Homeland Security is TSA. It's a small piece of what the department does. What it, what it's, it's big. Uh, sort of muscle is it writes lots of checks to state and local governments, state and local public safety uh, entities, cops, emergency managers, firefighters, and it also does a lot of training and best practices. And it's trying to get those levels of both 
you know, prevention, the skills of prevention, but also response capability out, you know, out into the homeland. Where I think we failed and where I think it's harder to do, um, though the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, try, you know, they have a preparedness month. They try to get people engaged right. is to bring it, you know, straight to your door, right? right. Is, is this the thing? And, and, you know, I'm trying to sort of complement that effort by saying, look, I'm, you know, I may not, my, I'm pretty average, my profession may not be average, but I'm sort of just like you. And I talk about mistakes I make as a parent and as an, as an expert. Yeah, I find my kids are oftentimes teaching me things about this now yeah. because it's coming up to the school. So I am seeing some of it. My wilderness survival children who yeah. have their packs that they put in the car of their things to protect them when they're out in the world. Yeah. I think there are things that are happening, obviously, and, and um, I think it's just continually reminding people, and sadly, it's some of the issues that are happening yeah. in the world that are reminding us that maybe now is the time to engage right. on some of those and things. I think it's, it's, and, and, you know, I sort of, I say in the book at one stage, you, you got this, like, I mean, because the alternative is you're, you're handing it to the former me, right, when I'm in government, I'm 3,000 miles away, you know, you have the capacity to to minimize the risks and maximize the defenses in your home, but also maintain who you are as a family and a community. And also, you know, in these times of sort of more politics than not, you know, yeah. also maintain our spirit as a nation and just yeah. keep our head on. I mean, it's, you know, there's, um, we've survived uh, a lot in this nation's history. And so, you know, keeping our head on is probably a good thing to, uh, to remember during these days. I've heard a lot of people talking about the historical kind of precedence and that we're going to be okay and yeah. that no matter what's happening, whether it's the level of terror or where you yeah. fall in the political spectrum. Your platform, really quick, as we're saying goodbye, yeah. you're, you have a podcast, you have I the do. book now, I have you're a on book. CNN. At How CNN, can I have a company. You? Yeah. Uh, so julieikayam.com is the easiest and the podcast, which is uh, produced by our local NPR station, WGBH, is called The Skiff, S-C-I-F. That's the secret room that you learn all sorts of secrets. And actually, this Monday, we're going to be posting one on uh, what does a transition look like? There's all this noise about who he's picking, who he's not actually 90% of what a transition is, because I ran it, I ran, I was on it for Obama for the Department of Homeland Security, is really the mundane stuff of budgets and, you know, what's happening in each of these agencies. So hopefully people listen in the book and, um, and um, I probably won't be going into government again. So, so watch for me elsewhere. All right. Well, you're doing valuable work. Thank Thanks you so much so for being much with us, Julia this. Kayam. I appreciate it. The book is Security Mom, an unclassified guide to protecting our homeland and your home. And I appreciate you being here. Thank you for having me.